Hello guys, welcome to Code Prava. Today we are going to learn about time and space complexity. We will learn how to calculate time and space complexity for a given algorithm. So for a given problem, there can be multiple ways to write a program. Now there is a question, how to choose the best out of it? So there can be multiple of matrices, multiple of parameters on the basis of which you can decide the best out of it. The most popular matrices are time and space complexity. So let's talk about the time complexity first. So basically time complexity is analyzed for very large input and the worst case scenarios. If you write a program, it will take different time for different machines to run it because it depends upon the machine configuration. The time complexity tells us about the number of unit operations which are going to happen for a given input size. So now we will look at some general rules while calculating the time complexity. So in order to understand, let's take an example. Suppose I write a program and the time complexity I calculated was something like this 5n square plus 3n plus 7. Don't get confused with this. We will uh, look about it later. So the first rule is drop the lower order term. So the highest term is here 5n square and we can drop this 3n and 7. Now we have to drop all constant. We have to drop the constant as well. The time complexity comes out to be order of n square. Now please remember these both things because we are going to use very frequently uh, approximately in each time complexity calculation. The first type of time complexity we are going to look for is the constant time. So let's understand this using a problem. Suppose we have a function which is calculating the square of a number. Now let's analyze the time complexity for this program. If you see the program, whatever the number or the input size we will provide, it is going to just do one step. It is going to calculate the square, basically multiplication with the self that is n into n and either you pass 4 here or 40 or 4 million it is just going to perform one step into the square calculation and the second step to return it. So overall, this is taking a constant time c. So we can say the time complexity is here order of constant and we know the constant is always neglected in the big O terms. So we can see the time complexity is order of 1. The second type of template is the loop. So we are going to learn about how to calculate the time complexity when there will be a loop in the program. So we have a function which is taking an array of size n and we are just running a for loop and then we are printing each element. So printing each element is a constant operation. So let's say this is taking the c time. Also there is a for loop. So it is running n times. If you see we are running for loop from i equal to 0 up to the n minus 1 that is the n length. So we can say it is running n times. So if we calculate the time complexity, it would be c into n. So we know we have to ignore the constants. So we can say the time complexity will be order of n here. The third type of time complexity is nested loops. So let's take an example. So we have a function where we are printing the stars. If we put 4 in the input, we are printing 4 by 4 star as you can see here. So as you can see, for a given n, there is a for loop, which is the outer for loop, which is running n times. Also there is an inner for loop, which is again running n times. And there is some constant operation going on. So if we calculate the time complexity, it will be c into n into n or c into n square. But we have to drop the constants. So we can say the time complexity is order of n square. The fourth type of time complexity is logarithmic time complexity. So let's take an example. So we have a function which is taking a number n and it is running a while loop until n is greater than 1. Also, it's printing the n and in each iteration, it is dividing the n by 2. In other words, the input size is being divided into half in each iteration. If the input size is being half at each step, we can also say it is growing from down to up. So we can write that if we are reaching up to 2 here, then we can write when we are going to the second step, it's 2 into 2, that is 4. For the third step, it's 8. And if we move up to k times, that will be 1024, that is the n. Okay. 
so we are multiplying it up to the k times let's say this is k times so we can say it like 2 to the power k is being n so let's take log both side that is log 2 to the power k is log of n and here the base is 2 so k will come here so it will be k into log 2 base 2 will be 1 we will ignore it and it's log n so the time complexity comes out to be log n if you don't understand this mathematical calculation just keep in your mind that whenever you see the problem or the size of input is being divided or it's being turning into half there will be a time complexity of order of log n you can take the example of binary search where the time complexity turns out to be order of log n the next type of time complexity we can get to analyze can be a sequential statement if we have to analyze the time complexity for this particular program let's say the time complexity of the first line is c1 now we have a for loop here and it's running n times so let's say the time complexity is c2 into n for the second for loop again it's running n times so we can say the time complexity will be c3 into n so let's analyze the overall time complexity which will be c1 plus c2 into n plus c3 into n we can drop the lower order term then we can write c2 plus c3 into n c2 plus c3 again a constant we can drop and finally we can see the time complexity will be order of n the next type of time complexity we can get to analyze can be in a if else statement suppose we have a function and it's taking an input n and there is a if else statement inside the if you see there is order of c into n work going on because of a single for loop on the other hand we have two for loops inside the else case so here it is uh, let's see previous one was c1 and the next one is c2 into n square because of two for loops now we have to analyze the time complexity the time complexity will come out to be c1 into n plus c2 into n square we have to drop the lower order terms then it will be c2 into n square and then we have to drop the constant also the time complexity will come out to be order of n square because we talk about the worst time complexity and the worst time complexity will be order of n square when this condition will be false and all the code will be flowing through this double for loop so i hope you got to understand how to calculate the time complexity in very less time by seeing a program you can set out these templates and you can remember the basic steps to calculate it now let's look about the time complexity which time complexity is best so if you see order of one is just a constant and the cpu operations does not increase with increase in input size so we can write order of one is the best so far then comes order of log n believe me or not the order of log n turns to be a constant after some time when there is a very large input size order of log n is a very very good time complexity as compared to order of n so we can say then we have order of log n order of n totally depends on the input size and it grows as the input size grows so the next time complexity turns out to be order of n then comes order of n log n n is already there and there is a significant calculation or the significant multiplication of log n as log n is a very small term that's why you can see order of n and log n they are very close to each other you can find this time complexity into the sorting algorithm like merge sort then comes the time complexities like order of n square order of n cube so we can say order of n to the power k is the next time complexity k means k is greater than 1 then comes the time complexity of order of 2 to the power n with the increase of n it increased with exponentially of 2 to the power n so this is not a good time complexity and at last the worst time complexity we'll see is the n factorial now let's talk about the space complexity the space complexity is the second matrix on the basis of which we decide the goodness of an algorithm space complexity of an algorithm quantifies the amount of space taken by an algorithm to run as a function of length of input space complexity tells you about how much space is being used 
when you are running a program with the input size n. While consideration of space complexity, we only consider the auxiliary additional space except the inputs. While running a code, it can happen that at some point of time, the memory consumption is high, but at some point, the memory consumption is low. So we will choose the highest memory consumption at a particular point that is called the space complexity. Let me tell you about this more. This is a graph where there is a time increasing into the x-axis and space is represented on y-axis. So you can see at some point of time, the consumption of space is highest. So this is the space complexity we can say for a program. So the first type of space complexity is constant space. So suppose we have been given a function which is doing addition of two numbers. So let's analyze the space complexity for this program. So here I am storing the result of addition into an extra variable that is result. So an extra k space is being consumed. This is the constant space. Also there will be some space being used into the return statement. Let's call it k1 and k2. But with the increase of input size, either if I increase the numbers up to millions, these two variables or these two steps are not going to change. Only some constant space will be used. So I can say the space complexity is order of 1 here. That is the constant space. The next type of space complexity is linear space. Let's look about it. So we have a function which is taking a string as argument and we have declared an object that is frequency mapper to store the frequencies of each character. Also, we have declared another variable n which is holding the length of the string. Let's say this is taking k space. Now we are running a for loop on the each character and for each character we are filling this frequency mapper. Now there can be two cases. The best case can be all the characters are same, then we will use only one space. But in the bigger notation, we talk about the worst case. So let's say there is a case when all characters are different. In that case, only else block will run and there will be n entries created into this mapper. So in that case, the length of frequency mapper will be order of n and we are using the order of n extra space. Let's neglect these constants and we are using some spaces like k1 plus k2 into n and let's ignore the lower terms and then the constant. So we are using a linear space complexity that is order of n. One another type of space complexity when we use the recursive calls or recursive functions. So let's see the example. We have a function which is calculating the factorial of a number. For example, it's taking a number n. If the number is either 1 and 0, it's returning the same. But if the number is not 0 or 1, it's again calling the same function by reducing the input by 1. If we talk about this whole function, because we know the functions are in the stack and let's say this whole function is taking k space. So for the n, it's taking the k space. For the n minus 1, there will be another function call because it's a recursion. It will be again k space. For n minus 2, there will be again k space and this will go up to the 1. For a number n, it's going from n and decreasing up to 1. So we can say it's going n times. So total space complexity used will be k into n. Let's ignore this constant and then we can say the time complexity used in this recursive call is order of n. That's why everyone suggests you should avoid doing the recursive calls because they need extra space to run. So our last topic of today is time and space complexity trade-off. So generally it has been seen that the time complexity and space complexity grows in opposite directions. What does it mean? It means if we want to achieve a good time complexity, we have to burn some extra space. And if the storage is going so higher, we have to compromise with the time complexity. So this is a general trade-off and we can say that both things are inversely proportional so wherever you need a better time complexity, you need to burn some extra space. And if you want to save your memory, then you have to face the higher time. So in a real world of programming, we always focus on good balance between time and space complexity. So I would like to thank all of you if you're watching till here. If you really find this video useful, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and please subscribe the channel for more such videos. Thanks again.